Vegas 64 has been out for a few weeks now and has met with responses ranging from lukewarm to downright hostile. To be fair, it's not entirely the fault of the card itself, which is a fine performer, albeit power hungry. The response was more of a knee-jerk reaction from those hoping that the card would have better stock at launch and be more reasonably priced. This is the slightly cut down version of that card, the Vega 56, which by the time you watch this will have been available for about a week and should at least have some units out in the wild. It faces similar availability and pricing issues as Vega 64, but initial reactions are much more favorable from both reviewers and end users alike. Let's find out why. Let's just dive right into it without a long rambly intro from yours truly. The Vega 56 has an MSRP of $399, and surprisingly, there were cards available on launch day for that price. Unsurprisingly though, stock on major websites lasted mere minutes, and although some bundles pop up randomly for $499, that contain the same games as Vega 64 was selling with, for the most part Vega 56 is long out of stock. It remains to be seen when there will be enough cards for people to just hop onto Newegg and buy one, and if by the time you're able to do this, if the cards are still relevant anymore. I've decided that unlike my Vega 64 review where I focused more on the negative aspects relative to the rest of the market, I'm going to just evaluate Vega 56 based on its absolute performance. If you get your hands on a Vega 56, what can you expect in gaming titles? In order to do this, I wanted to cast a rather wide net over some cards that you might be considering for your next gaming machine. I've put together some charts ranging from the GTX 1060 all the way to the GTX 1080, including basically everything in between. We're going to evaluate pure gaming performance here without consideration for ancillary factors, although I am going to be putting together a follow-up video discussing Vega power draw, overclocking, and memory tweaks. We can expect slightly worse performance overall from Vega 56 versus Vega 64, as the card comes with 512 fewer stream processors and a lower boost clock. You still do get the same 8 gigs of HBM2 though, so memory speed or bandwidth shouldn't be a limiting factor here. Vega 56 also does require two 8-pin power connectors and the same recommended 750 watt power supply. This is a far cry from NVIDIA's offering at this price tier, as the Pascal architecture dominates when it comes to overall efficiency. A few notes on my testing methodology for this video. My Vega 64 does not behave particularly well when just plopped in a system. When left in stock configuration, it ramps directly up to the temperature limit of 85 Celsius and just sits there, throttling the snot out of the GPU clock for the duration of the testing load. I wanted to see if there was a way I could get the card to maintain some sort of a stable boost without altering voltage or clock settings. I've replaced the stock thermal paste with Arctic Silver and also set the fan curve to be fairly aggressive. The card runs loud as balls now, but I got it to sit in the mid 70s and boost appropriately. In contrast, Vega 56 fared much better in testing. I didn't have to do a single thing to the fan curve and the card remained relatively quiet the entire time. Fan speed didn't exceed 45% or so and the max temperature I saw was 72C. The Nvidia cards in this test were all run at stock settings. All tests were run at 1080p. Now I certainly am aware that some of the cards in this test are powerful enough to game comfortably at 1440p and even run some titles at 4K. However, I didn't want to choke out something like the GTX 1060, which is a fine card in its own right. The 7700K overclocked to 5 GHz used on my test bench is more than capable of handing out enough frames to render, even at lower resolutions, so that we're not bottlenecking our GPU. The tests were run using a mix of DX11, DX12, and Vulkan APIs. All titles were run at their max settings or preset, but with AA turned off. This usually means ultra or very high. Let's take a look at how Vega 56 performs and come back and chat about it.
Vega 56 is positioned in the market to compete with the GTX 1070. Their MSRPs are the same, although at the time of filming, the price of a 1070 is still inflated to almost $500 due to mining, and Vega 56 cards are just nowhere to be found. If we could theoretically find these cards for the same price, it actually looks like AMD's card is the better value, coming out on top in 8 out of 11 of our tests. This is all without even attempting an overclock, undervolt, or both, which can lead to both better performance and lower power consumption. It's actually rather shocking how close Vega 56 manages to come to scores put up by Vega 64, especially considering how I had to jump through hoops to make sure the big Vega card could reliably hit those numbers. Without tweaking anything, Vega 64 actually puts up worse numbers than Vega 56, as it was throttled down to around 1200 MHz the majority of the time, trying to hit temperature targets. If given the choice, I'd much rather have Vega 56 humming right along out of the box, then grab a few extra frames from Vega 64, but be forced to listen to that ridiculous fan noise all the time. This might be why people have been more willing to give Vega 56 a pass when it comes to price and availability. Its performance actually justifies waiting for it, or trying to beat out everyone else and snatch it up when Amazon gets three of them in their warehouse miraculously. As long as we don't see similar price hikes to Vega 64, which is selling now for over $700, I think Vega 56 is a reasonable buy for a mid to high end gaming setup. So what do you guys think of Vega 56? Are you going to try to grab one if they come back in stock? Let me know down below in the comments. Also don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already so you don't miss my Vega follow up video where I'll talk driver improvement, overclocking, undervolting, and power consumption. Also, check out my merch store, link down in the description, if you like what I do here and want to help support the channel. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.